Welcome to my 100th video and I'm starting it with a topic that's open to debate subject to a certain amount of subjectiveness which to my mind there are but two options as to the answer when this question is posed Who is or was New Zealand's most decorated soldier? The first name to spring to mind is undoubtedly Charles Upham he was awarded the Victoria Cross twice in World War II, Crete 1941 and Egypt 1942. Upham has been the only combatant out of the 1,358 to receive the award to win it twice. Then of course we also need to throw in James Waddell. Who? I hear you say. Waddell is a man better known in France than his country of birth and his resting place. The swashbuckling five foot nothing Waddell was in the thick of it for three decades. The Boer War. Algeria. Morocco. Gallipoli. And before I skip to the next one, you might be surprised to hear Gallipoli was a joint Anglo-French operation and that more French were killed in the campaign than, say, Australians. The Somme. Verdun. French Indochina. And there were 700 legionnaires under his command there. Suppressing the Boxer Rebellion in China. When he was risking life and limb conquering the Turkish fort come stronghold Said Elbar in 1915, he was already in his early 40s. Wounded on several occasions, Waddell was a recipient of seven Quad de Guerre, the French military cross, and any complaints as to my French pronunciation can be sent to my old French teacher. He died in the 90s. Quad de Guerre's were only presented in World War I and World War II and recipients also included civilians and forces allied to France. This was their highest award for bravery in the French army at the time. A single legion of honour, a civil and military award orchestrated by Napoleon Bonaparte for services to France. The Chinese expedition a commemorative medal, a Saharan medal and Saharan order, and last but not least, uh, the Moroccan medal. And here's all that collection put together. Arguably, therefore, New Zealand's most decorated soldier actually never fought in the New Zealand Army. Waddell actually shared many things in common with Upham. Given their heroic exploits, both were rather humble chaps, avoiding the limelight and emphasising that they were part of a team spent a lot of time explaining to journalists their awards were the result of teamwork. Better still, they tried to circumvent all the journalists altogether. Both were or became farmers. Like many who joined the French Legion, his pre-recruitment story is full of twists and turns that began in Dunedin in 1873. One of a family of ten, yes ten, he spent much of his childhood in Cromwell, where his parents are buried. A pupil of Otago Boys High, he always had one eye on a military career. One subject he was rather good at at school was French, which would come in handy. After leaving school, he had a couple of jobs, a student teacher and insurance clerk, before taking his first commission with the British Army fighting the Boers in South Africa. At 24, Waddell was the first New Zealander to pass the British Officer Corps entrance examination. The normal route at the time was being granted a commission based on who your parents were and what school you went to. And this unconventional meritocratic avenue to officer rank would come back and bite him in the arse. Upon arrival in Durban, Waddell was bullied relentlessly by his superiors. How bad was the bullying? Well, one night he was beaten, stripped naked, with his hands tied behind his back and marched around the camp to the taunts of the so-called compatriots. It came to the point that it needed the New Zealand government to intervene. 
and fearing Waddell's treatment at the hands of the British would deter other New Zealanders serving in the motherland's cause. He was shipped sideways to India with his regiment. It was there he met his first wife, a French lady by the name of Blanche Prudhomme. They were married in 1898. It was through her contacts Waddell got to join the Legion in 1900 as a sub-lieutenant. Prior to the World War I, at which time he had advanced to the rank of captain, he had done tours in the Sahara, Algeria, Morocco and twice to Indochina. When you hear Indochina, think Vietnam, Cambodia and Laos. At the pointy end of World War I, he was a battalion chief leading 825 men. Between May and July 1915, this number was whittled down to under half. In three months of fighting on the Turkish peninsula, Waddell won two citations as well as being wounded. He was then sent back to France to recoup with what was now his second wife. A year later, he found himself in command of the 2nd Battalion of the French Foreign Legion going over the top against the Germans north of the River Somme. The German defensive line at this point was described by Churchill as the strongest and best defended position in the world. Whilst the attack was a success, it was somewhat of a ferric victory. Of the 825, 117 were killed, 131 captured or missing, and 498 were injured. Do the maths. Waddell was none of the above and won his third quad de guerre for his courage. A year later, in 1917, he was attacking the German line near Rems in appalling mud and weather, sustaining the same devastating losses. His bravery in that action was recognised as well. Next, Verdun in April of 1917 as part of the Moroccan division. Yet another meat grinder which resulted in success for the French. Less the 515 men of his regiment who were killed or injured, including him in the latter category. Number 4, a quad de guerre, was now in the bag. Again, he celebrated the advantages of being a smaller target. Such was the sacrifice and military significance of this engagement. All the survivors from the regiment were awarded the Cross of the Legion of Honour. Before the war ended, at the end of 1918, he went on to win three more quad de guerre and ended up being wounded for the third time. With his luck, I would have taken a ticket in the French National Lottery. It was him that took the salute on behalf of the French Foreign Legion at the state parade down the Arc de Triomphe. In 1920, he retired from the French Foreign Legion at the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. Now aged 47, he went to live the quiet life on a farm in Tunisia with his third wife, and that's her pictured, and their two daughters, Maud and Elizabeth. Uh, but his and yours and my term for retired are somewhat poles apart. He also helped train troops on the side on and off till 1926. Anyone who has seen the Day of the Jackal knows the French fought independence in that region for decades to come. It wouldn't be till 1950 Waddell finally returned back to New Zealand. The local press were waiting on the wharf to interview him, to which he figuratively and literally gave the media the finger. In tow was one of his daughters, Maud, her hubby and their kids. Lieutenant Colonel Waddell died in 1954, aged 82, and he is buried in the Tiro Tiro Cemetery in Levin. His gravestone is somewhat distinctive. And these are two of his great grandkids, Sam and Emma Waddell, laying a reef in 2012. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is my 100th video. I really embrace bringing stories like this one to a wider audience. Given a decade ago, an application was made for the funds to make James Waddell's Amazing Life into a book and a documentary. The government, however, turned down that application. I feel honoured, therefore, I have at least done my little bit portraying one of New Zealand's greatest war heroes. 
By subscribing and liking, you are telling the gods of YouTube's algorithm this video and my channel as a whole have merit and are worthy of a larger audience. And that means uh, the algorithm recommending this channel to others. What I'm saying is I can't do it without you guys. And teamwork, gentlemen, teamwork. And by the way, hopefully I can titillate you with this one as well. The photos in it are stunning and the link is, as they say, below. Thanks for being part of the growth of this low-tech channel where the story always eclipses the graphics tenfold. Spot you next time.